Welcome to my second installment of the video walkthroughs for Alter Aeon. My name is Felon. Tonight we will be running through the labyrinth west of Jokaren. We start from the Gladys Spirits Waypoint and carry on. One word of warning as we begin. I am a 36th level thief. And my alignment is prime evil. So mobs react differently to me than they might to you. So you have to take my strategies and advice with a grain of salt. Um, necessary protections throughout uh, protection from evil. Uh, most mobs are evil aligned. Anything of interest is probably evil aligned. Um, pretty much all the XP level mobs are poisonous. So the poison is also important. A lot of them also curse. So curse ward, if you're able, is a valuable the obvious faith shield, stone skin sanctuary, you know, whatever, whatever you need for protective purposes. And we start through the rift, uh, a little bit north and west from uh, the Glade of Spirits. Most people won't be able to run through that portion like I do. Uh, all those mobs I just ran past are aggro. They will attack you if you can't, if you're not sneaky enough, or you don't stealth through, uh, or if you don't have a very high charisma. I don't. I don't bother with it. Sneak works well enough for me. Loads of interest. The labyrinth is exactly what the name implies. Uh, it is a big, big maze. It's six full racks, nearly 600 rooms, um, set up like a classic paper maze. Um, there's two levels to the area, um, an upper level and a lower level. There's also the central chamber, which is a rack unto itself. Uh, five by five by five cube, basically. Uh, five rooms on a side, five rooms high, uh, where the Dracolich's lair is, the main boss of the area. Basically, I'm going to run through straight to the end for the most part. Um, I'll breeze through a few key points on the way. Uh, I'll show locations of chests and uh, some of the deeds. Uh, there are four finished deeds in this area, two of which are chained, meaning that there are several stages to each one of the two. Uh, one of them is only three. It's finished on the first two levels, or first two sections, I should say. Um, the second one is five stages, and it runs from the second section through the fifth section. So let us begin. We are at the beginning of the first section, which is the lower level, beginning of the lower level, the northwest corner of it. This is the only section where you don't need to open a door to get to the stairs. Okay, I lied. This is the. It starts in the upper section. Stairway descends to the next section. Sorry. This is kind of a trap. In that you skip a portion of the first deed, as well as any of the equipment items available in this section. So basically, where you enter the area, you'll go straight south to find the first stairs. It's only 
seven rooms from the entrance. However, further south from here, we find a chest which requires a key to unlock. It was also the first switch. You notice all the rooms with a switch um, have a special long description uh, stating that an iron ring hangs by a chain that goes into the wall. Pulling these rings opens doors in other parts of the section. It's the only way to open these doors. Some sections have two of those rings, some have three. Also know we have several dead ends, random areas. <gasps> I thought I opened the door. Oops. So in this southern corner here is the first of the poles chains. <laughs> to the blind listeners, well, I guess you gotta explore a little. Just note that it's always worthwhile to check all the dead ends. You never know what's going to be in it. Um, we come upon our first deed. Um, to the west of here, we have the Mind Flayer. Um, deed is getting its crystal ball, uh, which requires killing the Mind Flayer, obviously. I can make this work. Slew the dreaded mind flare and took its crystal ball. Uh, which is here, just west of me in the central portion of the first section. Uh, anyways, enough banter. Um, so mind flare is, as you'd expect, a spellcaster. You'd have to prepare yourself accordingly if you're interested in completing that deed. Um, I also note that there are some doors. One section there that's inaccessible from uh, this end. The other quest that can be, got, be started on this section is the uh, Gorgon Sisters. First of which is in that side area that it's entirely possible to skip. Uh, that being said, uh, we'll advance to the second section, the lower floor. I'll enter stairs. So, uh, here's uh, another chest. Key required. Interesting. EQ in this chest is a pretty low load probability. Um, identifying the chest is a nice little strategy to see if it's loaded or not, uh, which it is right now. I'm not going to give away what it is since I already have some and have no need for more. You've noticed a series of doors here on the lower wall. South 3, the Draculich. Uh, these are simply windows. You can't open these doors at all. It's just a transparent window to show you uh, the layout of the place. This door, however, is the one that will uh, allow us to advance. But we have to find a switch to open the door. 
which is in this northeast corner. Allowing us to go to the northwest corner. Which will open that door. Well, there's a Gorgon. Second of the three. Also another one roaming around these parts. You'll notice here a door to the north. Uh, this leads to the Mines of Moria, below the Dwarven Marketplace. Uh, it's a back door, so to speak, into this area. Also here we have a down exit. You'll notice those scattered throughout the entire labyrinth. This down exit will lead to the section of the first portion of the area that I mentioned was inaccessible from there. This is the way to get into it. A couple things in there are worthwhile. If you're feeling uh, ambitious. However, our goal is back the way we came. Also, to note again, this is the beginning of the Lost Adventurer's Deed on this section. The first of them can be found here. What's our next stairwell leading us back up to the upper level of the labyrinth. Once we're feeling well. A uh, good idea at this point would be to keep ground up. Next level there's a few mobs that use lightning pretty freely. Valor is another highly recommended skill. The Minotaurs will roar at you. So, carry on. There's a ring there in the north, pretty much right next to the room you come into, which will open a door leading to another staircase, which will lead us to another ring, which will open the door allowing us to advance. Again. If you are a blind player and you can't see where I'm going and where I'm pulling these rings, uh. sorry, um, I'm just going to have to explore a little and find them. I did go through some extra effort in that regard where all the rooms that have these rings are lit, they're not dark. So, looking for the long description in those rooms will reveal the ring. And again, they're the only rooms in the entire area that are lit. Everything else is dark. So, we shall carry on. Bypassing pretty much everything as we go. And the uh, door leading to the next section is actually right by where we started. We a door here, very shortly thereafter, with a chest inside. Pretty much find two chests in each section, one of which can be picked, one of which requires a key. One requiring a key, one requiring a key loads on a mob nearby. Um, the one that can be picked is always behind one of the doors requiring a switch that's also nearby. Uh, let's carry on. I 
head into the fourth section now. Uh, probably the most spread out of the six. Uh, to the east of the entrance is your first chest, which we're going to bypass because we're not interested in it right now, just interested in advancing. You notice here we have the three windows again, and my lightning flash from earlier reveals the rooms, meaning we're directly south from the second section on the lower level. Hopefully this gives you some idea of the layout of the place rather than just confuse you, but we'll see what happens. Door there. Now we bypass the keyed chest. I bypass the switch for the pickable chest, but there's the door for it. In the beginning of the second half of this section. My sink fell. Ignore the group chatter. It's not actually with that group. I'll go join them for fun and games after the video is done. So in this far southeast corner is where we'll find our stairs to section 5. Section 5 is a fun one. My favorite mob in the entire area is here. Her name is Isha, the Dark Elf. And she can ruin your day very easily if you're not ready. But I'll leave all those surprises up to you to discover. I will still want to maintain ground on our other buffs, just so we don't get our butts handed to us. Also, uh, we either want to retreat or be heavily prepared for a variety of attacks. Always want to be flying, because you'll uh. find mobs like that when that earthquake Another one that will do all kinds of mean things to us. There's another door to one of the chests. Switch of which I just ran to and passed. And we'll pull that ring so that we can advance. We are nearly to the Draculich. Here we have the chest requiring a key. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of fun there. The section actually has an extra chest. In this little section. A little more fun to discover. One thing you can note is that anywhere where you have these airfall rooms, the down exits, absolutely want to be flying, of course, if you don't want to fall back to the beginning of the whole area. But also, no mobs can come in this room, so it's a good place to stop and regen if necessary. Also, any of the rooms... with stairs uh, leading to the next section will be a safe room. Once you enter those stairs and you're on the far side of them, you're no longer safe. So let us run past the last mob Ouch. or get attacked by it and find ourselves the last safe room. We're north from this room is where we're going to find the Draculich. His entire cavern 
is roamed by several higher level, very much aggro guards, uh, bane guards, ethereal mages, a couple golems, all floating around. You will need to be flying to maneuver around here. It's all pretty much open air except for the center pillar that Draculich stands on. I'm going to head right to it. And say hi to the Draculich. He does not aggro anyone that's evil. Which is why I just come here and say hi to him. Like so. He won't aggro when I start trying to dispel him either. First things first. Make myself a waypoint. Which will, uh, make matters a little bit easier for myself. Now the long, sometimes very long process of dispelling the Draculich. Considering his level is higher than a player could possibly be, or even reach with uh, cast level equipment and small amount of magic resistance definitely makes dispelling him crapshoot sometimes it's quick sometimes it takes all night haste myself maybe speed this up a little I mentioned previously that there are four deeds in this place, uh, Draculich being the fourth. Um, one key point, we did I did get a sank already, which was really, really quick. The other thing I want to uh, make sure I get is his ice shield, so I'm going to want to use fire spells to kill him. So I'm going to continue dispelling until I get his ice shield as well. Anything else besides a sanctuary and ice shield is pretty inconsequential. Time to regen. Um, like the previous video in, this, in my series, um, I'll share the strategy for killing the dragon. I'll also share uh, defensive measures used, uh, basically whatever I know about it, as we get to that point. For right now, we're just going to wait for mana. We shall now resume attempting to dispel... The Draculich's Ice Shield. Switch back to uh, Mage Cast Set. And there we go, we have his ice shield. Not exactly concerned with the uh, fire shield. So uh, let's recall to my hallowed ground, save point. Take a moment to regen a bit. Now for Draculich. As all dragons do, he breathes, he has his breath weapon, and he also has spells. Spells in this case being very common for dragons to spell, as well as casting ball lightning. He, he also uh, breathes lightning and cold. Believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, 
Yes. Those saves in this case will be uh, spell resistance and spell save, uh, cold save, breath save, and zap save. Easiest way I find to kill him after getting the Sank and Ice Shield dispelled is just to fire field him due to his size and weakness to fire. He's very much evil, so you'll want to have protection from evil. As well as ground and uh, fire shield. Stone skin as well. He was physical attacks. And uh, obviously, uh, Sanctuary. He also uh, casts Fear. So, Valor. It's also a pretty important one. And of course, Sanctuary. And those are my relevant saves. 74% uh, spell save to go along with the 35% spell resistance. And uh, cold zap and breath right around the 50% range is more than adequate. With this setup, I'm easily able to kill a Draculich in one run. Behaving as a mage and only being... 28 mage. I kill him in one run and I very rarely even cast heal when dealing with him. Yeah, it's worth a shot. Lethargy is always nice slow them down a bit. Otherwise, uh, we'll just hasten ourselves and fire field away. Watch them fall. No vulnerability never hurts. That, and Draculich is dead. And my sanctuary fell in the midst of that. It didn't even hurt. His horde you'll find on the ground at the bottom of this section. If you kill him and get his key, free to help yourself to all of his belongings, of course. And with that, we uh, have completed the area, killed the main boss. We have at least done a brief overview of the four available deeds, the many treasures available. There's a lot of higher level equipment to be found here. Some scrolls, some wands, staves, equipment for all classes and all types. A very large area with a lot to offer. There's also 34 uh, fame available throughout, which is a uh, nice bonus. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy the area. Have a good night.